degree. That's a very important thing that people should keep in mind. I'm working on it and um, I am hopeful that the truth will uh, appear soon. I don't think we will find the plane, but I think we will find the truth. Want to get to grips with the stories that really matter? To cut through the spin and the BS. Want unvarnished and fiery debate? Then join us for Crosstalk. One o'clock every weekday. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <missing. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what, did fail her. Yeah, it was another era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Saturday night, that was the world. We've got Pete Barnes, we've got Lois Perry, and we've got the author of Gender Madness, all in London. And... Hey, good morning. It's Christo, it's Talk TV, it's the weekend, it's a Saturday morning, how are you? I hope you're all right. I hope you're well. I hope your week's been nice. You had a nice week? I do hope so. It's uh, me with you until seven o'clock. It's early breakfast. We have a lot that we will be discussing over the course of the next two hours. We will have more on Rayner, the council tax, Raider. We love Angela Rayner. 
here. Oh, that woman is not for turning. And uh, we'll find out from you whether you think that she should resign because now, oh, those pesky police. You know the police that she was backing uh, over Partygate and all of those investigations? And she was, I think, rightly saying, well, look, if the police start investigating you as an MP, you should sort of stand down, at least for a bit. Um, well, now she says that she's going to remain in her position. Uh, now the police are investigating her because uh, uh, she'll only stand down if there's any impropriety that has been discovered. Little bit of a hypocrite, I think it is fair to say, so we will talk about that. Hey, it's the Grand National. Have you ever won any money on a flutter? Have you, and not necessarily just on the Grand National, but on anything. I want to know whether you've ever won any money. And uh, we'll also talk as well about what TV shows you'll bring back. I'll have my right royal roundup. And we've got Dave Chawner. He'll be in doing the newspapers this morning. I think we should keep it light-hearted this morning. There's been so much misery in the world over the course of the last few days. And, um, well, I've got plenty of time to bring you misery. I really do. So we've got lots to bring you over the course of the next two hours. And that is all here live on Talk TV. Well, I'm having a cup of tea. I'm having a cup of tea on Talk TV. I'm rhyming now. Do you know, tea to me, though... See, I know, I'm going off on a tangent already. I really do think sometimes that the producers just... What, they don't know why we bother with the running order, because I don't end up doing any of it, really. Well, the worst is when I put a tweet out and I just don't even ask the question. We put the tweet out with the question on and I don't even get round to it because I'm talking about complete nonsense to you. And I love you dearly for that. That's why we're friends. Because you listen to my nonsense and uh, you tolerate it. And I'm always eternally grateful to you for that. And um, what nonsense was I about to tell you? Yes, I'm having a cup of tea. Do you know what? I was having this conversation this week about tea. Tea, to me, is a winter drink. Does anyone else agree with that? So I have a cup of tea in the morning here because the coffee that they serve in this building is literally like, well, what they do actually, and this is a little secret of Talk TV Towers I'm going to let you into now. What they do is that they wait for the Grand National to end, they scoop up all of the horse muck off the course and then they put it in the coffee machine here and serve it to all of the staff. Um, it's, a way we're, it's, a, it's the way we're shown how valued we are here. Um, and... Uh, Fairness to them, it is premium horse muck because they are thoroughbred horses. So, I mean, we should, be, we should be grateful for that. So the coffee in this building is not good. It is not good. In fact, it's very rare that you find any office coffee that's good. At ITV, they used to have a really good coffee machine when I was there. But that was, like, years ago. <laughs> so, and also, you know, I don't really want that to be the legacy of my ITV career, the coffee. So... In work, I have a tea, right? But I don't like tea in summer. So this is not going down very well. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not even going to finish it. I'm not. Because to me, tea is a winter drink. And, you know, I know when I'm turning. I know when, you know, the, the, it's like I'm... It's, it's almost like I'm a bit menopausal, you know? Like when the tides and the moon and everything changes... That's when I know it's summer, because um, one day I take a sip of tea and I say, no, I'm on coffee now. I'm on coffee now in the morning. And then one day, around sort of October, when it starts to get chilly, I take a sip of coffee and I say, no, it's tea now. And then all through winter, I drink tea every morning until it's summer again. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that absolutely fascinating? I do hope so. That's all we've got time for this morning. <laughs> um, so, Angela Rayner, it's not a good morning for her. Might be a good morning for you, and I hope it is. And you don't forget as well, you can tweet me, Christo underscore radio. Have we put the tweet out yet, Johnny? He's still writing it. Oh, good God. Do you need, do you need me to write it for you? Um, oh. oh. Oh, hang on. I've just had a message from Dave Chawner. Have you got this? Have you got the message, Johnny? Oh, OK. Hey, mate. I will have to do this on air. Dave Chawner's coming to do the newspapers. Unfortunately, my car has been booked to go from News UK, not to News UK. I don't have anyone's number to call. I don't know how I'm going to get in. Can you help, please? 
So there's a car waiting outside to take Dave Chorda. Have you got Dave Chorda's number? Why don't we call him? We'll talk to him ourselves. To put him on air now. We're going to call Dave Chawner. I'll, I'll, I'll call him. So let me let me let me say hello to him. All right. Oh, poor Dave Chawner has been waiting waiting at home for his taxi, and he's just been sat outside here. Let's, let's put him straight through. Just put him straight through to me. All right. Don't don't say hello to him. All right. Hello, hello, Dave. Hi, mate. It's it's me. You're on the radio and the television at the moment. I've just thought oh, of, hello. because I just called you from from because I just got your message while we were on 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 the TV. So I read it out, <laughs> and then someone has to sort out this mess, and I'm not leaving it to them. So um, so what's happened now? So cause, so is the car sitting outside here? Yeah, the car's sitting out the destination, not where I need to go from. So uh, yeah, God, that's, that's damn it. damn that Tom Williams. He's the man that's yeah. supposed to, you know book this program and he's left the car out so so where are you you're sat in your your, your your flat at the moment are you i'm just sitting in my flat with all the lights on just on my own oh, while there's a poor oh. driver just sitting underneath oh, you somewhere dear. what are you wearing sorry uh so <laughs> <laughs> you're in your flat all right so can we do, do we know do we know your address do we actually know right. your address yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he sent the right address. I mean, there's going to be a car coming right here. Oh, because but... you, the car's coming to you. Yeah, yeah. From there. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, but do we know the address um, so that we can sort it out for you? I mean, that's quite a philosophical question. I'm more than uh, happy to get, get past that. On. I Probably think you should. I don't think you should say it on air. I don't think you should because <laughs> oh, you know you know how many fans you have on this program. You wouldn't want a stampede <laughs> to your house. Uh, especially, yeah. especially while you're in your nighttime negligee, um, with uh, with fans desperate to meet you. Yeah, with my eye mask and my silk pajamas. Yes, uh, uh, and your funny. and your pom pom slippers. See, I don't. I I would tend to wear a kimono nowadays. Really? Why? What's the benefit of a kimono? It's just I like. It feels very silky and very freeing. Oh, very nice. But I, I had yeah, it. Yeah. I had it shortened, so it's just, just. You know, sort of mid thigh now, my kimono. It was quite long, but I had it. Oof. I had it hooked up right up to my mid thigh. Oh, that's quite a racy kimono. It really is, honestly. You don't want to, you don't want to be sitting opposite me when I'm wearing it. That's all I'll say. <laughs> I remember that happened with, with the first week that I was at university. Someone was sitting down wearing too short of shorts, and that's how I very much got to know them. Yeah, uh, so yeah you've got to be careful. Well, ex well ex exactly. I mean, there have been many times when people have come to my my house and they've left knowing what religion I am. <laughs> so, I suppose, you know, it's, it's all about tolerance, isn't it? Listen, what we're going to do, we'll, we'll, we'll put you back through to, to Donnie, the producer. Donnie's going to get a car to your address, all right? Great. And then Brilliant. we'll try and get you here in time. For, we're going to be talking. I'll tell you what we're talking about this morning when you get here. Mm. Is Angela Rayner a hypocrite? Ooh. All right. When mm. have you ever won money on a flutter, on, you know, on, on, uh, because of the Grand National? Have you ever won money on anything? Ooh, nice. I like that. Uh, uh, and uh, a very famous television show is returning. So what shows would you bring back? <gasps> oh, that's a great... Now that... Oh, we could do the whole show on that. Well, one. I know they're good questions. That's what I'm. That's what I'm paid for. So you know, that's right, not really right. a compliment. But thank you for saying it anyway. Um, <laughs> all right. So okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> all right, mate. See you later. All right. See you. See you in forty-five minutes. Make sure you're ready for the taxi. Poor Dave Chawner sat there, staring out to space. Poor guy. All right. Well, we've sorted that out now. I I just took control of that situation. Honestly, sometimes you just have to, don't you? OK, uh, what have we got here on some of the texts and tweets? Tell Dave Chawner he's not really needed anymore. That's not very nice. Well, we would save money on a cab, though, so every cloud. Uh, OK, uh, what have we got here as well? Um, uh, what have we got here? Um, uh, Rachel has sent a lovely message this morning. Rachel says, I'm worried. So am I. I live, I live in a perpetual state of worry. Please tell me you're going to be staying on Talk TV when you move to YouTube. If you are not, I'm seriously going to require therapy, and I'm not joking. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I hope so. I would hope so. But, you know, there are changes to come. 
That's all I'll say. There might be good changes, there might be bad changes. I, I mean, there was a good sign the other day. I mean, I probably shouldn't reveal this. But there was a good sign the other day, because I, I, I came in to do the royal tea the other day. And I... So I was in the office, and my pass wouldn't work. Now, you always get a bit worried when you come into the building and your pass doesn't work. You think, oh, you know, they finally worked it out. They've, they've, they've cancelled your pass. Because, you know, I've heard of people being fired that way before. You know, especially, especially when you're on an early morning show or, like, an overnight show. Do you know, once I heard about a presenter. Well, I know this for a fact, and I will not reveal their name. Oh, I'd really love to reveal their name because I couldn't stand them. Anyway, it was on a different station that I was on. And uh, it's not Steve Allen. And um, they used to do a nighttime show. And when you do a nighttime show, and I've done overnight shows myself, um, you know, they're brilliant shows. I love doing late nights and overnights and those sorts of shows. I actually really, really do. Because you've got this, there is a special bond with your audience that you just don't get in the daytime, you know? Um, but you're, you're lonely. You're, you're lonely in the context of your work. So when I come in and do this programme, there's no one here, really. There's the team that works on it. I say team, my word. I mean, <laughs> what's the phrase? There's no I in team, but there is a you in, 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 in you. Uh, <laughs> so, but there's no one here. And if you're doing an overnight show regularly, you don't see anyone. You don't see any management, you don't see any of the staff, and you, you sort of get forgotten about. And you sort of get forgotten about when it comes to cover work and all that sort of stuff. You just end up in your own little world, um, which I actually don't mind. But some people found that really difficult. And there was a story once about an overnight presenter that used to work on the station that I worked on, and they got ill. They uh, had to have a few weeks off because they were really ill. They got really, really, really bad case of, case of flu, proper flu. And um, one day, this person's producer got a phone call to say, oh, I, I, I'm downstairs in reception. And she said, well, hang on, you're really ill. What are you doing? You, you're absolutely at death's door. You're really, like, death warmed up. What are you doing in reception? And this person had turned up to work with their own get well card to give to the producer to send round the office to then be given back to them to remind people of their existence, which I thought was a very tragic story. It really was. Imagine buying your own get well card and then bringing it to the office whilst you're ill. Very, very sad. But that's the ego, you see. So in answer to your question, who knows? Who knows? So I was here the other day. And uh, I, shouldn't tell, I shouldn't tell people this, should I? All right. I was here the other day and uh, I came in to do the royalty and my pass didn't work, so I was a bit worried. So I came up to see oh, Lauren, who runs the station. She's not the boss, but she sort of runs the station. She's amazing. Lovely, lovely girl. So I came up to see her to get my pass sorted. And the big boss was in his office and saw me and uh, I thought, I'm not going to bother him, you know, um, because, you know, just, just, you know, I don't want to go in there and be on my knees again, um, you know, in the office, begging. I didn't want to go in there. So, you know, it's, just, it's a tragic thing to see a man of my age on my knees in a glass-fronted office. No one wants to see that. Um, and, but he said, oh, come in, he said, come in. He said, oh, my God, it's so good to see you. Come in, come in, sit down. So I did, and we had a lovely chat, and uh, I said to him, I said, you know, what are you going to do with me? I'm yours, take me. And he said, I don't know. I mean, that was the thought, he said, I don't know. He said, I do not know. I don't know. And, uh, but then that's very radio, you know, it's very radio or TV. You know, I've had, I've had hour-long conversations with bosses before, and I've walked out of the meeting going, I know absolutely, I've, I've known no more than before I went in. They just they just barraged me with word salad, and I do not know what anything more. But it was a good sign that he called me in his office. I think, to say hello, you know, very nice. Because you always have that feeling sometimes when the boss calls you in, you go, oh my god, well I've either done something really wrong or I've done something really right. So in answer to your question, I don't know, but I'm hoping that the signs are good, because um, he was so happy to see me. It might be because he's forgotten I existed though, <laughs> you know. <laughs> 
Oh, dear. So there we go. Don't be worried, Emma slash Rachel. I think it'll all be fine. Um, what else? Um, I'm very anti-Grand National, so don't talk about it too much, please. Well, that's why I'm talking about betting in general. And I know some of you are anti-Grand National, and I actually understand why. Because I think, you know, there have been quite a few horses that have died. We've acknowledged that in the past. We've done that as a phone-in in the past. I absolutely respect your position on that. Um, it's a position, as, and as an animal lover, I actually completely understand and empathise with and find myself a little bit torn on, actually. Um... However, um, I thought today, I think it would be nice to keep the show a little bit more upbeat today. Because, I don't know, I feel like this week has been a bit miserable. I don't know why. So that's why I don't want to do about the cruelty. I just thought you could talk about having a flutter in general and when you've ever won any money. I'm quite good, actually, of the when it comes to um, the sort of reality shows, things like that. Very good at picking winners of reality shows. Eurovision, I've got a really good bet on the next Bond. Actually, two bets on the next Bond. Three. Three bets I've got on the next Bond. One is a very mainstream bet. One is a slightly less mainstream bet. And one is a completely sort of left field bet. And if either one of those three win, I get £500, which I think would be lovely because the odds on a couple of them were so long that and now their odds have shortened massively. I didn't have to bet very much because I don't, I don't, when you gamble, I think it's extremely important, and I actually completely mean this sincerely, that you presume you've spent the money and you're never going to see it again. The money you spend on gambling is for the experience. It's not to win. You've got to have that attitude of gambling. If I've ever been to the races, which I have, and I've gambled, um, again, that to me is an expense of the day racing. If I ever play the lottery, I am spending that money for the experience of the lottery. You cannot spend money on gambling thinking that you are going to win or thinking I'm going to offset money that I can't afford by the win I'm hoping to get. You can't do that. It's The money you're spending is for the fun experience. And so we'll see whether my bond bets come off. But I bet on Ukraine winning Eurovision. And uh, I won when on that year when that happened. Um, a few other things I've won on. Love Island. I've, I've bet on a couple of couples on Love Island and won. I'm very good at the start of watching it going, yeah... The producers are lining you two up to win. Um, Strictly, I've won money on Strictly before. So those X Factor, I used to win money on X Factor as well. It was always obvious. You know, who's got the sort of dog with one leg or, you know, the sort of lazy eye. And you think, OK, well, they're going to have you win, aren't they? You know? Zero three double four four double nine one thousand. When have you had a, ever had a flutter and what have you won? Angela Rayner. We'll talk more about that in a moment. And uh, coming up as well, we will have our Right Roll Roundup. So all of that and more between now and seven here on Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kingston City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. 
May might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <Whirl missing. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans. Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. Yeah, we're supposed to it was another that. era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Morning. So you're waking up this morning to the news that the police are investigating Angela Rayner. Let's now... Uh, oh, he's, we've got Kevin. I was ready to talk to Kevin. We were going to talk to Kevin in Basingstoke about that. Oh, there he is. Hello, Kevin. Morning. How are you? I'm fine. That was a long intro. It reminded me of the morning where you uh, blamed the dog for weeing on your mattress. Oh, that was awful. Don't. Oh, my word, the dog did wee on my mattress. The d oh, my oh, word. And you know what? My room still smells of vinegar from that blooming Instagram video where they said that in order to get the, rid of the, the, the uh, uh, stain on the mattress... Um, All right. That I just thought you was blaming the dog. No, I was not blaming the dog, because the dog had done it, actually, months and months before, and I'd caught it, so I made sure that, you know, I'd washed the mattress, scrubbed it down, did all of those things, but then I ended up with a big... It wasn't a pee stain on the mattress, but it was a big, wet stain on the mattress. And bearing in mind it was a beautiful, brand-new mattress, I thought, right, well, now I'm going to try and get the stain out, and I saw on Instagram that you were supposed to do it with white vinegar and... and um, uh, bicarbonate of soda, but I ended up using baking soda, which is not the same as bicarbonate of soda, and then so oh, basically right. stank well, out that that, my house with vinegar. That a teacher for buying a, an expensive mattress. You should have bought a second-hand one. I don't want a second-hand blooming mattress. I, do, I wanted a nice mattress. Why do I need a second-hand mattress? No, I'm only, I'm only, you said you wanted to keep the show light, light-hearted, so that was no, my... I don't, uh, I don't want to sit on anyone else's stains or... Or or, or, or or dead skin, thank you. <laughs> I'm not single anymore. I did that enough times then. <laughs> right, should now, we get on to the serious stuff? Oh Yeah, you want to talk about Angela Rayner because it, the police are now probing her. Yeah, I know, but, I mean, it's a bit... It seems a bit desperate. I mean, it's a bit like the Curry story, isn't it? What? I mean, you know, Keir Starmer and she, she was having a curry. It was on the front page of the Daily Mail for two two weeks and nothing come of it. But, OK, I mean, I, I suppose, you know, some people would have said that it was a breaking of the rules, the curry thing, but you're quite right, the police looked into it and said that there there wasn't. But why is this a non-story, in your opinion? Well, I mean, it was 15 years ago and it was... It, Lord Ashcroft put it in a book, didn't he? Yes. About this. Um, and uh, he was a non-dom sitting in the House of Lords and uh, benefited him, allegedly, um, on his overseas businesses of £127 million pounds or something. So, I mean, this so, is so, so, so if, if, if you yourself... So, so, basically... Um, by the way, I think that's terrible. 
Lord Ashcroft in, in, in that respect. Absolutely. However, however, by your logic, if you've ever been, I don't know, uh, convicted or committed a, 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 a crime or impropriety yourself, and I don't know whether Lord Ashcroft has actually ever committed a crime, um, then... No, I did say allegedly. Allegedly, and, and also... Um, you know, I think from what I understand, non-dom status is 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 a legal thing. It may be hugely immoral, but it's a legal thing. Um, Not when you're sat in the House of Lords, is it? Well, yes, you can you can still do that. I, I look, the system is clearly broken if you're allowed to do that. But 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 from what I understand, I don't think Lord Ashcroft has been convicted of any kind of 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 of, of criminal act. <laughs> but by that logic, you can't ever point out that someone else has made a mistake if you've made one yourself. Well, no. I mean, the police did look into it, and they said there was nothing to see. And the only reason that it's um, it's being uh, probed into again is because the Daily Mail insisted on it, which they did with the Curry story. But don't you find it slightly strange that she married someone and for five years didn't live with him? Well, no, apparently it was... I mean, what I heard, it was... Sometimes she was in one house and sometimes she was in the other. But I when mean, you call, marry someone, you, you can't then, for tax purposes, have two addresses. If you are married, yeah, I mean, there are only very, a... very specific circumstances in which that is the case, i.e. if you yeah. separate from someone. You, you can't generally do that if you are married to someone in a marriage with them. Yeah, but if it wasn't a crime before, then surely it isn't a crime now. I mean, they're just... Uh... So, I mean... Well, I think from what I understand, it was not considered a crime from a, a, a tax evasion point of view, but this is about um, the potential for the electoral roll being um, uh, allegedly defrauded. She may have broken yeah, electoral true. law, apparently. Oh, yeah, I did hear something about that, but it's only allegedly. And I mean, it was 15 years ago. She wasn't an MP. I mean, what about... I mean, why aren't we having an investigation about all the PPE contracts and the track and trace and, um, you, you know, and where there was sort of like... Well, an can't, MP, can't we have but... it all? I mean, if, if, if Angela Rayner has broken rules and she wants to hold the government to account, she should be held to account. You can't have one rule for someone, one rule for others. She was okay. one of the most loud voices when it came to people needing to resign because they are subject to a police investigation. Not when they are found guilty of said police investigation, but because they are subject to that imp police investigation. Yeah, she's already, she, there's already been a police investigation. Well, now there's and, a new one. Yeah, I know, but well, say, say that the police say there's nothing to, to see, then they have another one or another one. I mean, the police have investigated it. It's come to light because we're coming close to, to, to a general election. And, um, you know, the Daily Mail wants to take our eyes off all the other corruption that's going on in the, in the um, Tory party. So, by your logic, then, we should never, ever hold an opposition party to account if we've got a terrible government. I mean, I agree that the government we've got at the moment is terrible, but there's no reason to stop holding the opposition to account. No, but she's been held to account. That's my point. She hasn't. She has. Been well, a what, so do you think the police have got time to just investigate because the Daily Mail have asked them to? Genuinely, is that your position that you think because the Daily Mail or oh, other I newspapers have reported on it, this? Oh, no, I think I've got that. It's that Tory MPs asked the police to look into it. Well, do you think that they would do that just because they've been asked? They would say, well, sorry, we've looked into this before. The police only tend to look at things, look into things if they feel that there is enough evidence to do so. Now, yeah, you're quite right, it might turn out that they say there's nothing to this. No, if they've been asked, then they, they've been asked to look into the situation, so they're doing what they've been asked. It was the Tory Bury MP James apologies. Daly. It, they initially dismissed the complaint, but the Greater Manchester Police yesterday confirmed its officers were re-examining allegations about Ms Rayner because of whether she supplied false information about where she lived before becoming... An MP. Now, you can't live in two addresses when you're married to someone unless you're separated. You, you yeah, can't. Apparently, the, the, the new evidence is the Daily Mail has spoken to an, el an elderly neighbour and she's given them the evidence that she was staying at that house sometimes. Uh, but, uh, no, but also, the, the, the neighbours have said that she used to describe herself as the landlady of that house. Those yeah, are direct yeah, quotes. Direct quotes from neighbours were in the newspaper saying that she that she was 
the landlady of that house, and that is how she described herself. Oh, right. Did they, did they get paid for that? Well, I don't know, but it's very rare. It's very rare. So what, now you're suggesting that the newspaper paid neighbours no, to not lie? I'm not suggesting that at all. I'm just asking the question, did they get paid for that? I never, I never suggested anything. Well, I've absolutely no idea, but, 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 but you, it does sound like you're perhaps alluding to the fact that if they were paid, then they might not be being completely honest. Why, why, well, why is whether they were paid relevant? Did they, yeah. get, did they, um, did they uh, keep a record of then of her comings and goings? They got it all in. Well, the they're their neighbours. I know my neighbours' comings and goings because I'm as nosy as can be. But that's that's th the point is, if they have direct quotes from neighbours saying that she described herself as the landlady, more than one neighbour, then that does imply she wasn't living there. And if that place was subject to a being a a rental property, then she shouldn't have been registered on the electoral roll there, and when it was sold, there should have been some capital gains tax. Now... Yeah, and if she said if she's, if she's done anything illegal, she will resign. Yes, so, but she asked you know, what, for... But she asked for Conservative MPs to resign purely because they were subject to a police investigation. She didn't say, when the party gate stuff was going on, she didn't say, oh, we should wait to see what happens and if they're found guilty, they should resign. Her position was, if Conservative ministers were under a police investigation, they should resign immediately. Well, I mean, she, there, I mean, she is in opposition. There's, there is a bit of a difference there as well. I mean, she's not running the government, is she? I so, mean, so if you're in opposition, like you can get away with something different to the no, words that you use that. yourself. I'm just saying, you know, she is. Uh, there's, hers, hers is supposed to be like fifteen hundred pounds, um, but I mean, it, it could just be a mistake. I mean, if it's if it's um, it's not um, it's not a criminal offence, is it? It's just a tax issue. Yeah, I mean, I think that. The electoral side of things could be considered a criminal offence. I think the tax side of things, she would probably have to pay the tax back and um, any interest that was accrued on that. Well, I mean, it sounds like it's clutching at straws, doesn't it? And I mean, I mean, say it's good, it could be just like the curry thing, and that, and it, then they're, they're just. Well, then it might well be. It up. might it might well be, but 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 it has to be looked into, and then decided and if this person is in opposition and will possibly be the deputy prime minister when in government then i'm afraid they need to be pretty much spotlessly clean and that is yeah, the well, job of the police she, resigned. she said she will resign yes but, done but, but, but a lot of people are saying that because she said when the government were under investigation that they were that they should resign that that is exactly what um the, what was the, the government she should under do. investigation for party gate fines yeah, but that was because he, he lied in, he li Boris lied in the Parliament, they didn't, didn't he? They didn't know that at the time. And also, by the way, fines for, for some would argue, fines for alleged partying that was going on, which, by the way, I found repellent, and I find Boris Johnson one of the most disgusting characters we've ever had in British politics. But fines for people partying, which is a civil fixed penalty matter... Um, I, uh, a lot of people would argue, well, actually, potential electoral fraud is way more serious than that. So, I mean, I think it's a fair comment to at least say, well, look, if you've asked people to resign for being investigated over a fixed penalty notice, then it is not unreasonable to say that you should resign if you're being investigated based on alleged fraud of the Electoral Commission. What did she do? She just put a different address in, is that it? She wasn't she allegedly living at the address where she was registered to vote, which they take very seriously. Well, Sorry, I mean, if it's, it's good for the know, goose. Do you know, we're in this um, uh, next election, coming up election, they reckon there could be five million people that will be turned away because they can't vote, because they don't know they have to have photo ID. Well, then, then I'm sorry, but if you don't know you need to have photo ID, then I'm afraid that, you know, I can't help you because it's it's free to get photo ID. We are asked for... I, for goodness sake, I couldn't go and see Madonna without ID. I mean, yeah, uh, for goodness sake, so I'm sorry, an election is probably a little bit more important, well, not to me, but a little bit more important than a Madonna concert. Sadiq Khan, yeah, the repellent of, little runt... Lot, oh, God, now I've lot. mentioned him. I'm going to have to mention all of the candidates, aren't I? The repellent little London runt decided... 
um, that you needed ID to watch the blooming fireworks in London, and now is like bleating on about how unfair it is that you need ID for a for a for a to, to, to vote. It's complete hypocrisy. You should need well, I, IV, ID to vote. Well, I looked online the other day. There's only eight. I think it says eight people were prosecuted for voter fraud. Doesn't matter. Five, Doesn't matter five, how many people, people were prosecuted for firework fraud. Probably zero, but then you still have to have ID for that. Won't be able to vote. Five million people won't be able to vote. You can go and you can get free ID in a matter of seconds. I could have done it while we were having this call. People are not really that engaged in politics. I know you are. I am as well. But some people don't really take take much notice of that. And also something like um, there's like twelve thirty different um, elderly. things you can use like oyster cards or bus cards but if you're young i think there's two yeah because if you are older and you needed an oyster card for your free uh uh uh, travel as an elderly person you have to use id to get that whereas if you are under 16 getting free travel or sorry if you're a younger person getting free travel you don't need id for that so there is a different threshold for those 16 to 2 say that again 16 there's 16 different types of ID. Well, when you you're older, you elderly. tend to have more ID because you're older. But also, if you are young and then you're worried about that, then go online and get a free ID. You can get free ID immediately. What? It takes 10 seconds. Yeah, but Jacob rees admitted photo ID was brought in to stop people voting Labour. Uh, well, <laughs> that I don't know. I mean, I'm not Jacob rees I don't know what he says, but I imagine an awful lot of nonsense comes out of his mouth, so I'm not sure I'd listen to him over a, a, over a, a trained dog, to be honest. But Are all I will dog say... Dog? is I do not think it is unreasonable when you consider how important elections are that you have a form of ID. You need a form of ID for so many things nowadays. It is not unreasonable to ask for one and for the government in in return for that to say, we will provide it to you for free. And if you need ID for fireworks, if you need ID to get into a Madonna concert, well then, I, I tell you what, you can jolly well need ID in order to go and vote. You don't need it for postal votes. Well, I'm sure that you need to then perhaps be registered at the address where the postal vote is, is sent to. Oh, addresses are quite important when it comes to the electoral register then, aren't they, Kevin? <laughs> well, anyway, on that note, lovely to talk to you. Yeah, yeah nice to talk to That's you. That's Kevin too. in Basingstoke. Thank you. That's it. He's gone. When we come back, we'll do the Right Royal Roundup and lots more of your texts and tweets as well. All here live. This is Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Isn't that? Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put the Statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> 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 yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. 
Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, 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 what did fail her. Yeah, supposed to it was another era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Morning, it's Christo here on Talk TV. We've got Dave Chawner with the big stories of the day coming up in the next hour. We'll talk more about Angela Rayner as well. Loads of your texts and tweets. But for now, let's get you up to date. It's Christo's Right Royal Roundup. Christo's Right Royal Roundup. And we start this morning with some good news for Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. They are cooking up two new projects with Netflix. The pair have two non-fiction projects in the pipeline. They form part of the overall deal that her and her husband signed with Netflix, which so far has produced one documentary that involved a camera crew following them around and not much else. Uh, let's not forget, of course, the deal with uh, Spotify, which came up with a podcast that was as dull as ditch water that no one listened to. And again, not much else. Apparently, the Duchess will celebrate the joys of cooking, gardening, entertaining and friendship. Mm. Cooking, gardening and entertaining. Isn't that the theme of American Do Nothing Dead Orchard, which is the name of their new company, which plans on selling, oh, cookery stuff, gardening equipment, pet food and entertaining equipment. Do you know, it's almost as if every single project that they take on is done so in the hope of selling you any old tat that they can. So uh, good luck with that and good luck with all the rubbish you'll be trying to sell us. Meanwhile, they are a little bit worried, Meghan and Harry, about whether they will be visiting the UK. Of course, it is the Invictus Games anniversary. Prince Harry will be here. There are concerns that Meghan Markle might not want to come. I am surprised, actually, that Prince Harry wants to come. I think that they are on a tightrope at the moment because, of course, they need to keep that royal connection, don't they, in order to sell all of that old tat, I mean, the tea towels and the teapots and all of the rubbish they want to sell to us now via American Dead Orchard. However, of course, they've done nothing but trash their family in books and in interviews and in any other way that they can, meaning that none of their family want to go anywhere near them. So how do they maintain that connection? Um, and, of course, the British public probably not liking them very much, whilst still being able to sell all of that old tat. So I'm not sure whether they will come. I'm not sure whether they will be booed if they do. That will remain to be seen. Um, they're not particularly popular. The YouGov poll this week revealed that Kate Middleton... Princess Catherine, of course, as she is better known, the Princess of Wales, are the most popular across the generations. It isn't all bad news for Meghan and Harry, though. There is a glimmer of hope for them. They weren't the most unpopular royals. That was Prince Andrew. So congratulations to you both. You are slightly more popular than Prince 
Andrew. But we'll end on talking about the Montecito Monas with some nice news about them because Meghan Markle was seen in the last few hours planting a passionate kiss on Prince Harry as she presented him with his trophy after he won a charity polo match in Miami. It was absolutely lovely. Look at that beautiful heartwarming moment between Meghan and Harry, which was, of course, witnessed by those people watching the polo match. Any friends as well who were there, uh, many of the people who were there to support them. And uh, the other, uh, of course, group that were there to catch that beautiful moment was, uh, hang on, oh, the Netflix film crew that were filming them for the other project for Netflix, which is, of course, a documentary about playing polo. How lovely and how coincidental that that heartwarming moment between them was caught by a Netflix team. Oh, how lovely, how spontaneous, how natural. Uh, finally, we end on some good news for the royals as well, because it was the wedding anniversary of King Charles and Queen Camilla this week. Now, do you know what year it was? 19 years they have been married, which, of course, is a lovely thing for them both, longer than he was ever married to Diana. Who'd have ever thought, actually? I mean, Camilla, she went through the mill, did Camilla, with the press, with everything else. Let's not forget about some of their dodgy phone calls between them. So who'd have ever thought that 19 years later they would still be married? And, uh, well, King Charles was presented with something very, very nice on his anniversary. It was actually some money. Now, not normal money, but money with his actual face on it. I think that that is a wonderful anniversary present. If anyone ever wants to uh, give me some actual UK sterling currency with my face on it, I would accept that very, very gladly. So happy anniversary, King Charles, Queen Camilla. We wish you the best. And that is Christo's Right Royal Roundup. Christo's Right Royal Roundup. Right, let's get back to some of the texts and the tweets this morning. And uh, we'll talk this morning about some of those, including Angela Rayner. Can you please put to bed this rubbish trotted out by supporters of Angela Rayner, like that last caller, that was Kevin, that the police had investigated her and she'd done nothing wrong? When the fact is, for reasons only known to themselves, the Greater Manchester Police initially chose not to investigate allegations against her, only changing their minds when the male did the investigative work for them, produced evidence and then called her a liar on the front page of the newspaper, says Mitch in North London. Well, of course, of course, um, Angela Rayner denies any kind of impropriety and denies lying. I think she's finished, says Rachel, Angela Rayner. I hope so too. The thought of her being the next Deputy Prime Minister sends chills down my spine. Thank you for that. Um, Dino suggests that I present a show with my mother. She's very funny and your ratings would soar. Oh, honestly, Dino, I love my mother dearly. She drove me insane in Dallas. Do you know I took her to Dallas? Do you know, she's got to that stage in her life, my mum. Well, first she tries to help. Did I tell you about the wedding ring? Did I tell you about how she lost my wedding ring nearly? Oh, God, she, like, she's become one of those people. Well, she, she's, she likes to help, and it's really, really nice, and I love her dearly for it. So when we went into the Madonna concert, because, you know, I took my mother to Madonna in Dallas, we go through the scanners. They've got all of the security, you know, the scanners that you have at the airport. So I had to take everything off, take my belt off, take everything, you know, your, your watch and all the stuff out your pocket and your mobile phone. I put it in one of the, the uh, your little tubs, and put it through the scanner. So I get through the scanner, right? And my mum's gone ahead of me. And so then I've got through the scanner. Now, as you know, I'm a bit ADHD. So ADHD means you've got to know where things are. In my house, everything's got a place. Because I lose things really, really easily. And I find that very stressful. And we, I get through the scanner. My mum's got through it, right? 
and I'm putting my belt back on and, and I, I, I go back to the, the tub that's on the scanner and there's nothing in it, right? Because she's gone to the tub and taken all my stuff out for me. That's thrown me because I don't know where my things are. She's like, oh, I've got everything for you. So I'm like, oh, all right. Didn't need to do that, but thank you. Putting everything back on. And then I'm like, where's my wedding, wedding ring? She says, what wedding ring? I said, the wedding ring. I put it in the tub. She said, oh, oh, I didn't see it. Now, by this point, the tub has gone back through the thing. It's gone because she said she's emptied it. She's given it back to them. So then I'm chasing my Cartier ring on through the tub, which has now gone to the new queue. I'm running back out going, someone, my ring, my wedding ring, my wedding ring. This is my mother trying to help. So I'm afraid I think that would drive me mad. She's also... The other thing she started to do... Oh, God. Love her so much. But... And I don't know whether... Is this an older person trait? Right. So we're in the car, and it, it's especially when it's a new place. Because she did it when we went to Montenegro together to a wedding that we were both invited to. So we're in the car, and we're, we're driving along, and she started to do this thing where she points things out. Do you ever have that with your older parents? So... We're driving along and just nice and she says, oh, oh, there's a McDonald's there. Oh, okay. Oh, wide road this, isn't it? Yeah, here yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's another restaurant there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hotel. Yeah, there's a hotel. Yeah. Oh, car dealership. Yeah, <laughs> yes, there's a car dealership. Yeah, I can, I can see the car dealership. Oh, traffic lights. Yes, yes, yes. We stopped at the traffic lights. Yes, yes, we are. It's the traffic lights here. Yeah. Oh, it's sunny, isn't it? Yes, yeah, very sunny. It's very, very sunny. Mm. Yeah. Uh, got lots of cars, aren't they? Yes, yes, lots of cars, yeah. Oh, lorry there. Yes, I know there's a lorry there. I know there's a lorry there. I know. And by the end, I kept saying to her, we, let's have some quiet time. <laughs> some quiet time. We're just sitting quiet. Because it's, it's, like, it's just like having an ongoing commentary of everything going on do you ever have that with older parents where they do that oh there's a man over there on the pavement yeah, i know what, what are you telling me why why are you announcing everything oh god love her though love her dearly but uh she's back at home um okay christo i wish you could tell us where you could obtain photo id in 10 minutes you are talking rubbish well it's the application photo ID for voting. Hang on. Um, apply for voter ID. Call to voter authority certificate. You only need... Uh, you've got till 5pm on the 24th of April, 2024. Start now. You need a recent digital photo of yourself and your national insurance number. You can go online and do it. And it takes minutes. Um, are you registered to vote? Yes. Where are you registered to vote? England. Done. How do you plan to vote in person? I'm, I'm literally doing it now. Do you have a photo card driving license you can bring to the polling station? No. Do you have a passport? No. Uh, can you uh, bring one of the following to the polling station? Blah, 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 blah. No, I can't bring any of those. Based on what you've told us, you can apply for a voter authority certificate. Um, so then you need a digital photo. Go online. So you have to put in your postcode. Let's put my postcode in actually doing this right now so you can see how quick it is continue so i've put in my postcode now they're looking for my address putting up my address in there done done we'll send your voter authority certificate to your registered address you say yes and then you, you have to put in your name to put in your name i'm going to put in fred blogs continue have you changed your name? No. What's your date of birth? Like first of the first, let's say 1984. But this is I'm making this up. Continue. Add your photo. Let's put in a photo. And continue. Oh, I can't upload a photo because of medical reasons. Blah blah blah. You could do that if you want to as well. Or you put in a photo. Continue. And then you're done. Put your national insurance number and then they send it to you. I mean, that took seconds, right? Seconds. So it's not rubbish. 
Angela Rayner is not helping matters by her no-comment tactic. Maybe she's hoping it will go away, but it shouldn't. Great show, Cristiano. Ah, it's the relevance. It's the, it's the resemblance to Ronaldo. That's what it is. Oh, you should see me in my briefs, actually. I wear them under my kimono sometimes. I take them off if I've got visitors, though. otherwise, you know, what's the point? Now, um, I've got to tell you, by the way, um, I did mention the election. Count Binface is running, Femi Amin is running, Rob Blackie, Natalie Campbell, Howard Cox, Amy Gallagher, Zoe Garbutt, Taron Galati, Susan Hall, Sadiq Khan, as mentioned, Andreas Christoffi, Brian Rose and Nick Scanlon are all candidates for the mayoral election. In the next hour, we'll have Dave Chawner in looking at the big stories of the day. That's next, all here live on Talk TV. This is Talk TV. This, my friends, is Talk Today with me, Jeremy Kyle. And me, Nicola Thorpe. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <you've got laughs> just yeah. for... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family and if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to it was have another moved on from era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. o'clock Saturday night that was the woke that was we've got Pete Barnes we've got Lois Perry and we've got the author of gender madness all in London and we've got someone I don't like <laughs> Good morning how are you it's Christo here on talk TV hope you're well this morning we've been talking about uh, Angela Rayner 
and uh, whether she's a council tax raider, whether she's a electoral fraudster. That is the allegation that is now being investigated by the police. Should she resign? Is she a hypocrite for not doing so? Um, oh, when have you won money on a flutter? We'll talk about that as well. But you must gamble safely if you do so. By the way, you can go to Talk TV forward slash helplines if you want to hear more about that or begambleaware.org. But we will talk about having a flutter. And uh, what other TV shows other than one very special one, which I'll tell you about this hour, do you want to return? Lots for us to discuss. We've got Dave Chawner as well. He is a... Um, Comedian, apparently. Uh, <laughs> he'll be uh, going through uh, some of those big stories as well, all here live on Talk TV. Now, let's do those mayoral candidates again. You've got to read out the party that they stand for as well as their names. And I, I also know that if I mention one of them, you've got to read all 45 again. Yes. So that's going to be happening a lot. Because uh, <laughs> otherwise you might hear a name and then go and vote for it mm. and then that, and then you'll have been influenced by us. Mm. <sighs> that works. Standing for the London mayoral elections, the candidates that are now confirmed are Femi Amin for the Animal Welfare Party, Count Binface for the Count Binface for Mayor of London party, Rob Blackie, who is a Liberal Democrat, Natalie Campbell, who is an Independent, Howard Cox for Reform UK, Amy Gallagher, the Social Democratic Party, Zoe Garbutt for the Green Party, Taron Galati, who is an Independent, Susan Hall for the Conservative Party, Sadie Khan for the Labour Party, Andreas Christoffi, who is an Independent, Brian Rose for the London Real Party, Nick Scanlon, who is from Britain First, and that is it. So if I mention one of those, you've got to do it all over again. Yes. It's like being around an actor and mentioning the Scottish play. Macbeth. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then they have all weird things that they've got to do. They've got to kill a rabbit and then throw it And do a the tent, twirl and do a thing. But that's, yeah. a, that's a little bit... Well, actually, people get very upset when you say a little bit OCD because then apparently that devalues mm. OCD. But that is a little bit OCD. But, I, right, this is this is a point that I've always made. I actually understand superstitions, if for no other reason that it, it puts you in a certain mindset. If I said to you, you know, every time you use this pen, you're going to, you know, have a good day or whatever, it puts you in that positive right, mindset. Right, something funny. Well, I, let's not be mental. Please, mate. let's find you a pen. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I agree. I, I was saying a couple of weeks ago, I don't know whether it was with you, but every time I get on a plane, I've got to touch the outside of the plane yes. with a flat hand. Was yeah, we, yeah this, we were talking about this the other yeah. day. I, I still have to do that. I still have to do that because otherwise the plane will crash. Yeah, it, but it won't though, will it? Unless it it's might. a Boeing plane. Well, in fairness, I did it once. <laughs> I did it once mm. where I forgot, and then I got on, and I was like, "Oh my god, I didn't do it." Would, did you? Was there genuinely a moment in your eye? You were like, "This is it." Yeah, and then I thought, "I can't, I can't ask him to. Open. We hadn't left yet. I was like, I can't ask him to open the door. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do it, please? Because they'd have thought, you know, he's unhinged. That's brilliant. But yeah, I, 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 I got really panicky because I forgot. Because I always, so I'm, I'm wheeling my luggage. It's got to be my right hand. I'm wheeling my luggage with my right hand. Then I stop at the door. Mm. I pretend that I'm changing luggage sides so that I can rest my, because otherwise it looks really weird. And yeah. then I go in. That's also the other thing as well about um, superstitions is that it looks, it can look really weird. Like, for example, I... Uh, I tend not to walk on three drains. Yes, I, well, it, it's not drains. It's because they're not drains. It's the BT things, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've got that. I have a very good reason for that, though. Because what, cause you might so, fall down. No, it. years ago when I first moved to London, I was I I used up all of my savings and put a deposit on a flat, and I I hadn't got a job, and I was going for three or four job interviews a day, and I just couldn't get a job, and I was walking down the street. And a friend of mine never used to walk on those three covers. And, and I just saw them. And it, just weirdly, there was this weird thought of, like, don't walk on them. And I was like, well, it can't hurt. And I didn't walk on them, and that was the job that I got. Oh. So it's kind of now, like, yeah, it works. Well, because I was told that when I was in my teens, that if you walk on three, it's bad, two mm. is good, and one doesn't matter. Oh, right. Two is good. Two is good, apparently, yeah. I did not know I that. I was always told that. They're like magpies, then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Magpies are good. Or, but always, when you see one, I always say, oh, hello, Mr. Magpie, how's your wife and family? Oh. Which is really Does annoying. it ever answer back? I, my friend Sally, who is completely mental, mm, great. Um, 
and I love her dearly, but she can't drive past a post box without touching something red. So when we'd be driving along in her car when I was at, at uni with her, she'd always be... T you know the little red thing on your heater? Yeah. You'd have an old polo, so, you know, you'd have the tiniest red thing to signify the hot on her heater. So we'd be driving along, and every now and then she'd just reach over and press it. And that's because every time she saw a post box, she's got to touch something is, red. Is that one of hers, or is that, like, a common... I think that's one of hers. Yeah, because, of course, there's the yellow car thing. Which What's is the always... yellow car thing? Have you never heard of the yellow oh, car thing? I don't thing? know if I want to know, because there's going to be another one. What's so the yellow car thing? So it was uh, every time you see a yellow car, you, you play this game with people. Every time you see a yellow car, you punch them. Um, and is this not a thing? I thought this was a thing. You punch a person. You punch a person. Like, this will be a mate. You, that that person has to be in on the game as well. You can't just assault a, an elderly OAP. Well, I was going to say, they need to know. So, so yeah, car. so it's it's two people in a yellow car. Well, if you drive you, a yellow you, car, you'll be done for spousal abuse. Yeah, big time. That's why I always wanted to get a yellow car. But that's the yellow car, poof, and then you do that. I think that is just mental. And, and also, do you remember the, the game... The game of like if you if you look uh if if you looked at someone did that a circle if you looked at it when it's below the waist they're allowed to punch you whereas if it's above the waist you're allowed to punch them. Could you go to a special school? Big old times. They were. That was definitely special. I think it probably definitely. was. Maybe it didn't I, even know itself how special it was. But I I honestly I don't believe in younger generations all being wokey and blah blah blah. But it does. If if they're not doing that, then I'm worried. Um. I think that's part of growing up. I think that's part of being... Well, adolescent. again, I got a lot of mine, I've said this before, from my mother, who is completely mm, unhinged. Yeah. I mean, she has a lot of it. She's about... Um, she crosses herself on flights because she is religious when she wants to be. Um, she... Um, oh, my God, she spits a lot. Yeah, I remember I you saying... Three times, puh, puh, puh. Yeah. And she can't say anything without spitting three times after. Anything nice, anything good... She can't say. So I'm. I'm really. She'll say, "Oh my God, you look so handsome." P -p -p -p. I'm. I'm so sorry, but if if I was prime minister, then uh, your mom would be in jail. I, I think spitting should be a criminal. Well, it's offense. not spitting, but it's p -p -p -p. But she does that? I. It's someone like I, I've seen a resurgence. I don't know if you remember in the early two thousands. I think it came from football. A lot of football players spitting used to, to spit. Absolute spitting is disgusting. I've seen, I've seen a real increase in it. There's a guy the other day that veritably gave me a shower. And I was just like, I don't need that. I don't want that in my life. You sure it was spit? Um, <laughs> zero, three, double, four, four, double, nine. What? One thousand. I'm not commenting four. on anything like that. I'm just asking. You don't always know. Uh, we love your mum, says Thomas, since we saw her on Christmas Day. Oh, that was when she was downing gin from the bottle which is disgusting my mum was downing raw gin at 8 a.m on christmas morning if, if it's on christmas day it's allowed any other day that's a problem that was just a day for my mum really <laughs> yeah, she loves gin um the public see this angela rayner media push for what it is tory loyal billionaires who own the media outlets trying to discredit the labor party I wish they said had the same appetite to report on the many Tory grubby taxpayer money deals or donors tax affairs. Well, they're all awful. They're all awful. I do, but I am kind of with him on this one. I do. I've got to be honest. I do feel that it is sort of looking for the issue there rather than the issue being raised. Well, well, as in what journalists do. Uh, yeah, yeah. Look into issues and hold power to account. And and how many Tories own second houses that they haven't claimed? How many Tories swindled on their tax? How many Tories have, have had done similar things? Yet it hasn't even been investigated by Angela Rayner and it feels like she's being pinned Angela to Angela Rayner called for people to resign when they were being investigated by the police. There was a huge investigation into Partygate. Yeah, I'm not like I'm not saying she's perfect. I'm not. I'm, I'm far from saying that. But I I feel that this is being used as an example. I, I agree. So with you that. want some 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 privilege for Angela? Right? No, 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 no. I if think... she's done something wrong, she should be held to account. Just because she's in the opposition, or she you know she had a tough life when she was a single mum, doesn't mean that she shouldn't be held to account. But, but this is what I. Th 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 there feels like a willful misunderstanding here. What I'm saying is, if she is wrong, she absolutely should be held. Well, how to would account. you find out that she's wrong without investigating? No, what I'm saying is the reporting feels very biased. If she's done wrong, she should be out. No question. Well, why the doesn't rules she, follow to why everyone. Why doesn't she hold her hands up or 
resign or stand down until there is... You know what it's like in Westminster. They'll just you just stand down for six weeks, they'll find that she's done nothing wrong, and then they'll, they'll give her a new job. Well, yeah, I mean, that is... I mean, th- th- there's that phrase, isn't there, from the thick of it, is if you quit after a month, it's the Prime Minister's fault. If if it's longer than a month, it's your fault. Yeah, and they it. always... It's like boomerang, bring you back. What have you... Saw, there's a brilliant story in The Times today that Liz Truss has been complaining about her time... When, 44 days that she lived in the flat, and she said, and this is a genuine quote here, she said she felt um, like a prisoner cut off from the external world... And um, she complained that she was left having to organise my own hair and makeup appointments. Well, that's quite tough. I mean, not really, mate. Like, she was literally... She was she was an intern prime minister. Well, that's and that, because the dark forces of Westminster got rid of her and she was a bit incompetent in the way... I mean, she, she was terrible. Visit. She wasn't terrible. She had the right idea, but the completely the wrong way of going about mate, it. I it doesn't could make be, the idea wrong. I could be a Prime Minister for 44 days. And I tell you what, I probably wouldn't tank the economy. Well, the economy was on a knife edge anyway because of the fact that um, interest rates had been artificially low for too long. So it wouldn't have taken much to have changed them. I actually agree she didn't go the right way about trying to achieve her goal. She was too quick, went too soon, and she played policy over politics. However... And incredibly arrogant. However, well, she was... She was voted in as leader based on a list of things she would do and she decided to do them very quickly now some people would say that that shows integrity yeah but also it was the only ever is it the only budget in history that wasn't audited by the like the budget for fiscal uh, office, office for, for for budget responsibility what, yes. yeah, and she was like was yeah what, i know better than that you was, that was uh, that's why i said Mad. she was playing policy over politics and that was wrong she was wrong in her execution Absolutely 100%. But the idea was right. And what annoys me about her and and the whole uh, uh, narrative around her now is that people slag off the idea, whereas the idea was sound. The execution Mm. was wrong, but the idea of having a low-tax growth economy is good. But now people uh, object to that. 100%. And people have a case study now to point at and say, let's never do this again. I'm surprised you didn't go for the other story about this, though. Go on. Liz Truss revealed that the Downing Street flat was infested with fleas. Yeah, I'm I'm not really that interested in that. Apparently it was Boris Johnson. Oh, no, his dog. His dog Dylan was to blame. I I didn't really care that much about that. One of my mates uh, had fleas as well. It's actually not as uncommon as... Uh, as you think. And, and you look at Boris Johnson and you think he yeah. probably, that hair has fleas. Uh, abs- absolutely. I, I think he needs to get... Uh, that, like, he needs to tear and make up every day. Yeah. That hair has probably got species in it that we don't even yeah. know. The dodo is probably in there. When do you think it was last cut? Um, I don't know. Probably when it was beneficial to Boris Johnson so that it could uh, mess it up. A hundred percent. Well, um, that's what he does. He stands there at the sidelines and then messes, messes it up. Messes it up and then goes on going, oh, yeah. I don't know what's going on here. Goes, oh, God, thank God. He is no longer Prime Minister. It still irritates me that he was ever I mean, minister, something we do agree on there. I mean, it's such, as someone who is traditionally centre-right in my politics, I think that he was where the rot set in. But I've said it before, I'll say it again. People disagree with me. They have the right to, but I really think that he was absolutely awful. Now, um... Have you ever had a flutter? Oh. Uh, it's Grand no. National today. Yeah, I know. I'm going to get all boring about this. I, I have had a flutter. I once won a, a massive four pounds when I was younger. Did you? Mm-hmm. I've, so I, I'm going to open my William Hill now. There are other uh, gambling sites available. And, of course, do gamble responsibly. I'll say it again. Absolutely. Um, you well know, thegambleaware.org is somewhere to go or talktv forward slash dot tv dot helplines. Um, but I do. I, I like a responsible flutter mm. occasionally. Um, I think you've got to be super responsible when you're gambling. It's very easy to sort of get sucked in. But um, I've got a few open bets. What this is what gets me about gambling is I actually think that it's a good way of learning about maths because it's very complicated. What's an open bet? I think that's a bet that you're still waiting to get the result on. Because you can go either way. You can either go... way, yeah. Either way is 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 when you. I think it's well in horse racing. I think it's the first, top second, three. or third. Yeah, first, first, second, or third. So I've got one, two. I've got quite a few open bets at the moment. They're all on bond. 
Ooh. on who will be James Bond. I, entertainment bets I do. I'm not very good with sports. Oh, I think you meant Bond as in that's what the horse is called. No. And who will be the next James Bond? Whoves will be the next James Bond? Doesn't work as a pun, but no, it really doesn't. Work um, as a pun. Uh, who who do you think it will be? Well, I've got Idris Elba. Um, no, I didn't. I didn't put anything on him. I don't think it'll be Idris Elba. Okay. I put a few. I mean, like they're tiny bets. So one is for Harry Styles. One is for the the biggest bet. I've got one for thirty one pounds, which was the biggest. What? Bet. That was the biggest one I put on, but that's because I got sixteen to one odds. Like another one is for. Who's like, that? But the rest of them are like you know I've got one here for five pounds, one here for seven pounds, and one here for. Who have you put uh, thirty one quid on? Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Who's that? He's an actor. What, it been in. What it's a good start. I'm not going to lie. No, Go he's, he's famous. He was in. He was in. Uh, I'll be the judge. Nowhere of that. boy. And what was the superhero film he was in? What was it? Cass. Kick, 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 Cass. I've literally never heard of any yeah. of this. He's married to Sam Taylor Johnson. I mean, if you have to tell me he's famous, that doesn't that doesn't. So seem I got like sixteen good... to one on him, and he's now the number one favourite. So I got good odds on him. Um, I got really good odds at the time on uh, Henry Cavill because right. I think he'd be a brilliant Bond. Mm. Um, and the other one, my outside one, which I only put five pounds on, Jodie Whittaker. <laughs> That would be terrible. Uh, is um, and you might not know him. He's an actor called Tom Ellis. Okay. He was in Lucifer, the TV series. Uh, it used to be in EastEnders years ago, and um, he is my sort of outside random because he's good-looking, English, um, and has been successful in a TV show in the states. And I thought that maybe he would be an outside chance. What a decision! And wouldn't you love to be in the room when they're making that decision? No, really? No. Why not? Because I don't think I think it would be a really difficult decision to make. Don't yeah, think... that, well, that, that's why it would be interesting. If it's an easy decision, if it's between Liz Truss and whoever your guy is, that's an easy decision. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be I a mean, spectator it, it sport. It depends on the type of place that you're working as well. Like what, what on I, earth does that well, mean? I've been in I've been in situations where I've had to make big decisions. For instance, when I worked in BBC Local Radio, and uh, which is very similar to a multi-billion-dollar franchise. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, it depends on how much autonomy there is on the decision making from the people at the top. I wouldn't want to be in one of those rooms where they're like, "Oh, well, you know, the work ex needs to have a say, and you know, the person making coffee mm. needs to have a say." And you know, all too often in organisations, you know, there are there is this idea that everyone needs to have a say. Yeah. No, they don't. Is, was was that what happened at the BBC? Um, like I remember, I. I shouldn't say this, but I will. I remember I got in one morning and um, it was the morning, it was a few years ago because it was Brexit time and there was a big Brexit vote taking place. So I got in in the morning and I said, well, it's obvious what we're going to do today is the big Brexit vote, right? And they'd all been sitting around having the show meeting before I'd arrived which, again, is very BBC, whereas in commercial it's like, well, the presenter really leads what's going to yeah, happen yeah, yeah. because they've got to sell it, but no, BBC, they all talk about it. And so I came in and I immediately said, which is not BBC at all, I made, came in and said, right, we're doing the Brexit vote today, clearly, big thing, that's clearly what they're doing. So they all looked at me, and they were like, yeah, no, but sort of Tarquin over here, <coughs> there was a really interesting documentary last night about the beauty of the canal journey, so I think we should be doing that. As our lead story, the beauty of the canal journey. It's a documentary I didn't even see. I've never been on a canal in my life. And the big Brexit vote is taking place in Parliament while we're on air, or took place last night or something. There was a really big Brexit story. They're like, no, 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 we want to do the canal journeys today. Did you have to do the canal no. journeys? I, I, it was one of the times where well, they didn't like me, <laughs> because I was like, no, I'm not doing that. I said, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not averse to ideas, but I have to have seen it. Couldn't you have compromised and done uh, Brexit on the canals and gone up and down the towpaths and asking people and boaters what they felt? We would about have probably the had the budget because you know there were more people like, really? like working on the show than listening. <laughs> I just understand I, what everyone was doing. Mate, I know that feeling. I oh, God, I didn't know what I. everyone was doing. Sometimes I'd get there and I'd be like, who are you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. One person, and they were like, you've got to be careful with this person. I said, why? 
And they said, well, they've just come back to work. They've been off sick for a year. So, OK, fine, I'll tread carefully. I said, what have they had? Heartburn. No. Yeah. Yeah, they were off work for a year on full pay with heartburn. I mean, I just thought, why couldn't they have a Gaviscon? <laughs> Seriously. They took me aside, so you've got to be got to tread carefully with this person. They're just trying to ease their way back into work. They've been really ill. Well, did you? You can be. You can now be um, dismissed for offering a seat to people. Did you know this? Have well, this tell story? me about that in a moment because we've got to get to a break. Yes. So when we return, <laughs> we will do that right here live on Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <listen. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Coming up, morning, we're going to talk about uh, the TV show that you'd bring back after the announcement of the return of a TV show after 40 years. But um, Dave Chawner, comedian, what were you, you you're saying you could be fired for something now? Yeah, you, you can now. Offering a seat to an older work colleague can count as age discrimination, uh, according to an employment tribunal judge. So I thought that that was manners, though. No, apparently what, uh, this happened to Alison Hammond. She said that uh, Gary Lineker was left feeling quite offended when he was offered a, a seat on the, the tube because people obviously thought that he was too old. Uh, people believe that this is a, a sign of like unconscious bias, that you think that person is over the hill and can't stand up anymore. But then if you don't offer someone a seat, then... That, then you can get sacked. So you could get sacked for offering someone mm. a seat, but you could also get sacked for not offering someone a seat. I think the solution is uh, standing only desk, get I rid think of the seats. solution is just to throw yourself under the tube train when yeah. it arrives. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I, joking. Please don't do that. I, I, to be honest, things like this, I think it, it depends. Like, 
I, if that is, I've got to admit, a lot of people in HR, I'm always like, what do you spend your day doing? And if you spend your day thinking about that, your job can't be that hard. I don't, I just don't understand the world anymore. Like, I remember getting in trouble. Um, well, not getting in trouble, but but I I call people love and darling quite oh. a lot. And I remember when I was at college, and this is going back quite a few years, and I used to dine out on this story, and now it's just normal. I used to say, oh, listen, uh, oh, yeah, hello, my love. But I do it to the boys and the girls, and mm. a couple of the girls were like, oh, you can't do that. You're being sexist towards us, calling us love. And I'd be like, but I'd say it to the boys as well. Did you call her sugar boobs instead? Yeah. I was like, I, I, I mean, God, you know. I'm pugging the boys for an inappropriate amount of time. You yeah, know, you, you, that's, you, you've got off with just a, a laugh. That <laughs> is very. I, I do. I, I kind of get that. I do think. Do you remember when David Cameron got told off for uh, calling an MP? Calm down, dear. Calm down, dear. That was right because that was an advert at the time, wasn't it? That's why he did it. it why was, can't you just say? St- I, I love. I always call people dear as well. I, I do. Hello, I dear. do think in that. I think it's context, and I think that's what's really hard, because when David Cameron did say it, it was incredibly patronising. I call everyone... I, I call everyone love, babe. Um, babe! Babe. Babe came from meeting my partner. I never used babe. Right. Until I met my partner, and then I started calling my partner babe, and then now it's sort of permeated to everyone, because babe used to really irritate me, mm. but now I'm a baber. A what? A baber, because I babe. People. That's mad. So, babe, love, dear, darling, but also I don't know anyone's name. Yes, that's uh, the other uh, problem. That's that's why I think uh, it's easier for blokes because you know you're right, mate. Uh, whereas like females, I find that very because I, I can't get away with. Uh, I used to say you, my, my sweet. Or you've also said females. I think that's rude. Yeah, to yeah. Me, it's people... ladies, but then people get annoyed that you call them ladies. I, you, uh, What's the difference? Uh, because, um, again, I was asked at work, not here, actually, but I was asked at work, stop calling people ladies because it's it's patronising. What do you um, call them? Womb humans? Womb, womb, womb. But I suppose that, that's, givers. that's womb, sex, womb not holders. gender. I mean, this is this is the thing like that. that no, but it wasn't based on that. It wasn't right. based on sort of their gender identity. Right. It was based on the fact that, and I don't really understand, but... But to, because I used to say morning ladies to when there was a group of ladies. Mm. My, again, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. My mother always taught me, who is very, very hot on manners, she always taught me you never call someone a woman. You never say she. You never say that mm. woman. You always say that lady, that but gentleman. But you do say he. You, do, you would say he. You say him over there. Yeah, but I actually, well, no, but my mum would say you'd say that gentleman over there. If it was a stranger. You know, so so yeah. so you know, you refer to them as a gentleman or as a lady because that is the 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 respectful way when you don't know someone to address them, and so I still refer to someone as a lady. I don't refer to them as a woman because I think it's more respectful to call someone a lady. But I, I apparently that's wrong. I I do feel lady is a bit Dickensian. It's a bit you know sort of. Is it not just polite? No, really. I, I don't know. Women. If you're watching women, yeah, yeah, women. Um, but seriously, is it? Do you object to being called a, a lady in in in, in passing? Because I think, a or lady. a gentleman in passing, I think that's a really nice way. If anyone called me a gentleman, I'd be like, sorry, mate, I've left so my I top hat and cane at home. No, but I would be. So mad. when I used to work at a shop, I would be. A, a, I'd have to get the manager, and I'd say, oh, um, right, so this lady um, needs some help. I never yeah. say this woman needs some help. I'd say this lady <laughs> needs some help. No, I think that's different. You're not going to stand there and go, oh, this it needs some help. No, but, no way. Like, but that's what you're supposed to say. Oh, this woman needs some help. No, you say this lady needs some help, or this. This customer needs some help. But I think in in, a, in an office space, you're not going to say, uh, I, I will refer you to my honourable gentleman friend over here. Who like, well, what's are you wrong wh- in an office saying, oh, OK, morning, ladies. Oh, well, I'll tell no, you, I don't you're a lovely lady. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I, I honestly think 99% of people would just kind of like, well, it's, that's him being him. I, 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 think, I think the problem comes when you're using these in a derogatory, in a diminutive kind of way of like, you no, know... And I think that that's the problem, that because they, they have been used in that way, now everyone who uses it is taught. Um, I also used to refer to customers as sir or madam in a shop. 
when I worked there. Yeah, now that that I I think if ever I got arrested, I've always thought about what my thing would be, and I think I'd always call the arresting officer sir or madam because I think I think you've got to like bow to that sort of hierarchy. Yeah, or but well, I don't know if I was. A, I've never thought about who, how I would address people if I was arrested because I'd probably be more concerned about the fact that I've been arrested. But um, I'd like to give it a go. But in 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 a retail space, or if I was. When I used to work in, in those sorts of jobs, or when I used to have to call people as well, I used to work in a call centre, I'd always refer to the customer as sir or madam, always. But again, people used to think that that was coming up, because I was literally, I was working in Vodafone, for goodness sake. I mean, mate, surely they kind of thought this is a bit facetious now. If you're, if you're in Vodafone... That, 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 no, that's weird. Why? That is weird. Hello, sir. And they're like, oh, no, hello. No, like that. Where's he calling from? Fifteenth century. I say hello, hello, sir, when they came in. But if if you know, uh, uh, um, look, I'm really sorry, madam, that we don't have that in soccer. Yeah, I'd yeah. Say it like that. I wouldn't say hello, madam, but I would say, oh well, I'm really sorry, madam, we don't have that in stock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. So I that sort of context. But I think or, it, oh, I'm, I'm, like you know, oh, I'd, I'd love to do that for you, madam. But I'm afraid that you know, blah blah blah. So in that, so so, you know, you're sort of delivering bad news in a respectful manner. Is it? but again, I guess, <laughs> what bad news did you have to give a well, Vodafone? That we'd, that we'd run out. I'm of, sorry, you're in Vodafone. Like that's the only bad. Of, of, we've run out of top up cards or something. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that sort of thing. <laughs> but I used to think that. that well, I mean, my favourite <laughs> was because it, it you used to have very. Like my mother always taught me this as well. Actually, it was my dad who taught me this. That used to say that that the um, you know the the customers, and it's so true. That, that if you want to, because it was all on commission. Uh, I've mean, got, an, got an hourly rate, but I got good commission for selling, mm. and I was a really good salesman. But um, that's because I knew who to target. Mm. Because um, it's so true that the people with money. Those who've got it don't flaunt it, and those who haven't do. Yes, and yeah. the people who come in with their flashy bags made up to the nines, all of that sort of thing. Um, the number of times that you'd yeah. sit down and you'd sell them a contract phone, and they'd have to go through a credit check, and they'd fail because they had no actually had no money. Really, and they'd get so. And then, if they got stroppy with me, they'd have a go at me. They'd shout at me. Then I would be like, "Well, I'm awfully sorry, madam, but if you don't have the funds to be able to pay for this mobile, then I am going to have to." close this application i'm sorry madam you know then i'd love being sort of sir and madam because then you are using it in a patronizing way but that's because they've shouted at me yeah i'm sorry well if you don't have the fund if 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 if, if finances are tight at the moment you won't find yourself approved for uh, a contract for we do have a pay-as-you-go section over here madam where uh, perhaps this would be a more uh, uh, appropriate for your uh, resources that you have at the moment. I can't believe you're the hunter. You know, be, oh, that's uh, brilliant. And th only if they were like that. If they failed the credit check and they were nice, I'd be like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry, but, yeah, this isn't this is out of my hands. It's the credit reference agency. But if they shouted at me, then... Did you ever say it a little, t a little too loud? Um... Yeah, I mean, I would do Brilliant. it because the desk actually where we did that was in was by the counter. But then you'd have people who came in who would, you know, especially because it was Yorkshire and they would be like sort of, you know, so they'd come in and they'd look like farmers. You know, yeah, they would, yeah, yeah. And they would be multi, multi, multi millionaires. But they had ripped tracksuit bottoms on. They didn't have to. Farmers are minted. Yeah. That absolutely don't pick or, or had really loads of land and all of that sort yeah. of stuff, but they didn't need to come in head to toe dripping in Gucci, yeah, because they you didn't need to flaunt it, they know they've got loads 100%. of 100. percent That's why I always said if I won the lottery, I'm, I'm absolutely not getting bedecked in all of the things that screech wealth because you just scream, Rob me, yeah, you've got to be careful as well. Or I think you know, it's nice to have a couple of things that are nice in your outfit. Go on, you know, what would you go for? Well, I, I've got a Gucci scarf. Right. Which was a gift. Easy, easy to lose. Too easy to lose. Um, well, I don't lose my scarves, but yes. But like, I... I uh, but that's... Just, but then I wouldn't wear... Every, but I've seen people who wear it sort of from head to toe. And firstly, that's incredibly expensive. I couldn't afford it. But secondly, it's. I think it's. It's. it then becomes vulgar. Yeah. There's a real line between... Um, you know, between style and vulgarity. Oh, 100%. I think I would spend mine on, like, really, really expensive uh, underwear, like M&S. 
Is that expensive it, underwear? Oh, mate. Three three pairs of boxes. I think it's twenty eight, thirty two thousand pounds oh, like it's mad. I would have thought that you were a briefs man. Oh, I used to be. Um, I don't know why I thought that. No, I, I quite like tight boxes. Oh, I like okay. A, I... I I I do judge someone if they wear briefs. Why? Because I feel that's mental. You're not 14 anymore. And by the way, Conkers is not a sport. Like well, I don't I think it holds everything in place. No, too much. I I think there's there's issues there if you need there's issues. Yeah, like if you need constant cuppage of your little gentleman. You not make that hand gesture when you're talking about cuppage. Well, more because I, I'm going to bring my breakfast up. <laughs> um, no, I, I I think I think that's weird. I don't think that's... I think that's support. Why, why do women wear bras? I, I would like to be a woman for a day to try on a bra. And also, they have yeah, a... If you were a woman for a day, you'd never leave the house. Yeah, big... Oh, big time. Absolutely. Um, your mother was correct on everything, says Anna in Surrey. Thank you, Anna. I mean, I think she was, but I think it's, it's, it's a dying art. I really do. And again, you know, when I go away with her, I always remember a lot of this stuff, because we'll get to the door of somewhere and she'll stand there and I have to go and open the door. You know, she does not walk through a door unless it's open for her, my mother. I do, I do have a picture of, like, you as a sort of five-year-old kid and your mum going, Happy Christmas, here's the Debrett's manual. And you're like, thank you, Mum. Yeah, well, it wasn't that bad, but she was very great you know, drilling it into myself and my brother that there was a certain way of being... I remember my friend Shelley Clegg, one of my oldest friends... And I Hello, met her when I was 14. She's still a friend of mine, really good friend of mine, but she's from uh, St Albans where I was growing up. And I swear to God, her mother still talks about the fact that when she walked into the room when we first met when I was 14, I stood up. And she still talks about That's that. That's mental. It, it, it blew her away. Yeah, I think it was. That a 14-year-old stood up uh, uh, when she walked in. Because that's freaky. You probably looked at her like the kid from The Shining. That's terrifying. Why? To, a dead-eyed kid standing over. No, going, she has loved me ever since because she like said that that play? was so polite. No, that's mad. And you also, you never shake someone's hand sitting down. You always stand up to meet someone. Always. Yeah, no, there is I get... never a scenario where you shake someone's hand. I neck. get that, but if someone's sitting down and they shake your hand, yeah, whatever. We've all got, you know, we've got places to be. Let's no, crack on. Come it's on. Rude. No. And if I do it by accident, because like you know, I'm busy and someone comes in, oh, uh, hello, I'll say, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't stand up to shake your hand. I actually say that because I think it's rude. I mean, it's like taking. I always take my uh, my gloves off to shake hands. Uh, which is... But I hate shaking hands, actually. I'm a hugger rather than a shaker. Really? Yeah, I, I hate shaking hands. I, I actually love foul. a good handshake. Oh, I think it's actually foul. Is, is that because you wear briefs? No, You've got it's your cuppage I elsewhere. Actually, I, I wear boxers probably more than briefs. Right, OK. Honest. We're back to that now. Yeah, well, you brought up the briefs. But I want to know why you hate shaking hands. That's weird. I don't like holding someone else's germs from all day. I think it's horrible. Um, well, no, they've not just been they've not just been operating on someone. I like, don't know what they've been doing. Yeah, I don't know. I th actually think it's the most vile greeting that you could ever have for anyone. I don't know who invented it. We're sneezing but on each other would be worse. But yeah. I, I, I like a fist bump. I prefer here when you meet new people. I do a fist bump because I prefer. Oh that. my god! Can you do a fist bump again? That is the whitest fist bump I've ever seen in my life. Th that that looks like you're you're shadow boxing it's a, a ghost. limp fist that terrible <laughs> please never do that again it's a do you know i have started walking around with, <laughs> with, with, with a limp i know really have run my house and the other day i swear uh my partner was like because he, he he pulls me up on it and the other day i was doing i was doing double double wrists i was walking around with both of them and he was like what oh, are you doing great. i was like what and I was double, double limp wristed. That's amazing. That's so limp and gay. I, I do think a lot of the time, and I think this is why a lot of those things come around, is I don't know what to do with my hands. That's why I don't like dancing. I don't know what you do with your hands. Oh, you've got to, you've got to have purpose for your hands when you dance. Yeah, and I, but I don't have purpose. But I, I think that that's one of your biggest Big, issues. Fair point, yeah. OK, um, what TV show would you bring back? Dinner don't ladies. answer! Yet because we will do it when we return, right here on Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaking. 
Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from King City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, yeah. minutes, four... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what, did fail her. We're supposed to, supposed to was have moved on from era. that. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Good morning. It is Talk TV. I'm still joined by the comedian Dave Chawner. Now, there is a TV show that is returning. Very exciting. It is, wait for it, just see if you know the theme tune. Dun, dun, dun. No, 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 no. Animal Hospital. No, no, no. Um, no. I, I genuinely don't know that. I've, I've never, I've never. No, no. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> Sounds like you need to blow your nose, mate. This is, this is too. No, 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 no. I, I don't, I honestly don't know. No. Bewitched? No. It's Bergerac. Never watched it. Oh, all right. I mean, it was pretty dull. Right. I have to say, I didn't like Bergerac, but after 40 years, they, they, they're reimagining it. What's that even mean, reimagining? Just remaking. Well, they're, they're just remaking it. With yeah, probably... just call it remaking, not reimagining. There's no, there's literally no imagination in this because well, you, you know just what it remade means, it. don't you? Yeah. Is, but Bergerac is. Do you want to, should we hear the original? Some of the original yes. Bergerac. We've got some Bergerac trailer. We've got Bergerac trailer. Here we go. In a brand new series. My name is Bergerac. Pure de That's very sweet of you, but I already have an hotel. Your ex-father and always said you knew nothing about business. It will give me a very real pleasure to drop you right into a very great height. Hey, Bergerac! 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 Oh, very good. That's why I'm here. 100,000 thank you. I 
think we've got the idea of I was going to say, TV went on a lot longer then, That was it? a trailer. It went that, was a trailer. that was a trailer. That's the insane. Murderer. And the quality's it terrible. Started, it starred John Nettles as the Jersey-based detective, because we're right. based on Jersey. And um, so I think the reimagining, clearly... Um, John Nettles being a straight white male. Clearly, Bergerac is now going to be a disabled trans <laughs> identifying lesbian right. who's black. Okay, great. Any any other changes? Um, Instead of Jersey, it's going to be... Um, oh, let me think. Well... Isle of Man. Jersey's probably too colonial or something, or mm. so there'd be something there. So w- w- where would it be? Hackney. It'll be based in Hackney. Yeah. Look... No. That does annoy me that a lot of these things are always like, and, and this is this is also another thing as well. I was we were watching a TV show that will remain nameless the other day. Any time there was a stabbing, any time there was anything bad, it was always South London. Any time there was anything posh, or it, so, was it was North always no, always North so London. A, a Bergerac's first case mm. will be of um, a the injustice yeah. of a horrific murder that will take place in Hackney. Um, the injustice, of course, being towards the murderer who will have been misgendered, not towards, of course, nice. the victim of murder. Um, and the, the, the real investigation will be the new black trans identifying disabled Bergerac will be investigating that misgendering. It will start off a murder investigation, but nice. when the when the murder's misgendered, yeah. that will actually become the focus of the investigation. I think that's finding the person that misgendered the murderer. I think that's great, and that will be that's so that's you do Bergerac. That's that's brilliant. Or it could be uh, going back to another story that Bergerac uh, kills a spider. Oh no! Well, then we'll be able to finish talking about like. TV no, no, no! I'm just saying that's. You didn't say. Th- you didn't say what you bring back. Oh, uh, I don't know. There's so many. Uh, Fun House. That was a very good show. I know you had it? a different answer before the break. Uh, dinner ladies really used to like dinner ladies. Uh, Victoria Woods, but she's Can't dead. Bring her back. She's dead. Yeah, I know. But but you didn't put limits on it. You just you ask me the question. It, it's your it's it's your responsibility to define it. Um. All right. So you bring back dinner ladies. The yep. the cast. Main Reimagine of course. I suppose I bring back Dallas, even though JR's dead. That was the one. Uh, it's not. It's not Bergerac. It's Dallas that you're mad about. Um, bring back Sons and Daughters. Never heard of it. Oh, Sons and Daughters was amazing. It was an Australian soap opera right. and a wonderful theme tune. Home and away. Sons and daughters, love and laughter, tears and sadness and happiness. I don't know why I feel I feel like I've been defiled in some way. I I I, I, I was hoping for that feeling. <laughs> so, there we go. Um, oh my God, Sons and Daughters. Um, Never Australian it. TV in the eighties used to have. The most wonderful theme tunes that Sons and Daughters, um, The Sullivans, um, P- Prisoner Cell Block H, which uh, had an amazing theme tune to end. Um, Neighbours, of course, Home and Away. Home and Away is actually a beautiful song. Home and Away is a very beautiful song. I remember my mum uh, bought me a, uh, a football shirt when I was 11. I was trying to get into football and they said, would you like Home and Away? And she went, no, love, I don't want a DVD. I want a, I want a football. Oh, she was very funny. Very sweet, isn't Aww. it? But I, I think, here's another one that I don't know if you remember. Uh, Strange But True, I'd bring that back. Michael Aspel. It was oh. all about. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Uh, it was all about uh, paranormal activity. I think I'd bring that back. Apparently, back. blind date. Sorry, I said <gasps> it wrong. Blind a date with uh, Claudia Winkleman. Right, come back. Very nice. Very nice. With I oh, that's actually on the cards. I don't know if that's going to come back. Also, I, I think that now in the age of Tinder and everything else, it's all too innocent, isn't it? Blind mm. date. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I think people are, people are freaky, mate. There's some weird stuff out there. Yeah, but I just think nowadays... I mean, look at Naked Attraction. Well, that's the whole point. Things have gone to such extremes yeah. now that you can't just have the screen. You know, mm. there'd be body parts being poked through the screen first. Yeah. That's what they'd want. Don't like they'd that. have to reimagine it so that, you know, there are holes in the screen. What Can we, can we bring back Noel's house party? Well, someone suggested that, actually. Um, and... It's, it's, oh, I don't know, I've just got a really nasty text, tweet, shall I read it? In the morning when Christo has his communist head on, do I ever have a communist head on? Are you like a Lego figure? You can change your eyes. Um, I've discovered another channel is refreshingly unbiased and entertaining, and there's not one mention of Madonna in an entire hour. (laughs) I mean, that sounds to me like a waste of an hour. 
Why would you not mention Madonna in an hour? One Madonna per hour. That is the quota. What's wrong with that? You've got to mention the mother of Jesus Christ. Um, can you please make it a feature on your show to hum a theme tune from the 70s and 80s and ask people to guess it? Very nice. After your attempt at Bergerac, I'm guessing no one will guess them, says Kevin. That's rude. Uh, also, bring back the littlest hobo. What? Oh, that was a brilliant thing. That was Is a that a real thing? Yeah. I think you're having me on. The, the littlest hobo, there's a place that keeps on calling me. That was, no, that was this the, no, no, the no, no. The Littlest no. Hobo was an American TV show, I think, from the 70s, and it was an Alsatian dog that was homeless, and it used to go from place to place solving people's problems. I don't believe this. I was Canadian, and it was it was uh, ran from 1979 till 85, and it was an ownerless dog, and it was a German shepherd who wandered from town to town helping people who were in need. Was that a kid's show? And then he used to hold... Yeah, it was kind of... Yeah. So we had, like, Poddington Peas, the shoe people, Thomas the Tank, and they just had a homeless guy going around with a dog. And then, basically, at the end of each episode, even though people wanted to adopt him, he'd head off to go and help someone else, and he was the littlest <laughs> hobo. <laughs> so he just went off. I'd bring it back as the littlest homo. Nice. A That's gay, very a gay nice. going from place to place, helping people... And then they would try and, and, and take him in. And, and then he would leave before that opportunity came, going to the next place. Here's, here's a game, make... Which would probably be, after going to from so many places, <laughs> the, the clinic. That make, make a show gay. What? Because uh, in the 70s and 80s, I think, you know, queer identity, etc., or, like, uh, so gay identity wasn't as much. What would you now reimagine, but with a, a sort of gay tinge... Well, you couldn't have Blind Date because they'd be at it in the green room beforehand. Brilliant. So you couldn't make Blind Date too gay. Didn't I think they did? Didn't they do a, a gay episode? Did they? Date? Yeah, I think I think they did. Um, so yeah, I don't know what else you could you could do. Homo in a way. Very very nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, um, we're gonna to have to think about this because yeah. I think that's I think that's a really nice idea. Yeah, I think that that, that is a, a the littlest a, homo is is a top one though. Uh, bring back this is your life. Well, apparently, someone's talking about that. Good. Um, and um, oh, this is your you could gay up. This is your life. Actually, you know, yeah. you didn't know, but this is my wife. Oh, how beautiful! I you can know, see that. You already. thought we were together, but this is my wife. And then a balloon arch, and she comes yeah. out. I think that's wonderful. Oh, theme tune was great for the young doctors. Do you remember the young doctors? Never heard of it. Da -da -da -da. No. Oh my god, it was very seventies. It used to have uh, 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 Jim Robinson from Neighbours was in it. Alan Dale used Who's to have that? a big perm. I don't, I don't know any, you don't of, know these any of these things. How old are you? Like <laughs> twelve? Uh, he was at thirty-five. <laughs> Mentally, um, I'm bring 67. Back Skippy, thank you. Great Zendel, shout. Warrior Princess, thank you. And uh, Triangle, says Jess, but with a migrant twist. Oh, <laughs> Triangle was an awful show. Triangle starred Kate O'Mara and Larry Lamb, and it was based on the ferry <laughs> that took people from Folkestone to, uh, I think, Zabrugga, somewhere in the North Sea, which was constantly, um, like, raining and terrible. Uh, and they used to have to close all the blinds on the boat because... Uh, and it was, like, supposed to be a glamorous soap opera. And it was terrible. These, Kate O'Mara, I think, got hypothermia by having to be on a, on the deck in her, her bikini. These all sound terrible. Yeah, they, they were, were. Was dreadful. It's one of the worst shows I, ever produced. <laughs> How did it get made? I don't know because it was it was it was terrible. Anyway, listen. Talking of yes, good how morning. Did it get terrible made? program. <laughs> <laughs> good morning. Good morning. El Dorado. I want to put in there as well. El Dorado no. was brilliant. It really was. It really was brilliant. And actually, they closed it down. That village still exists yes. in Spain. So it's, um, it was. Uh, do you know what El Dorado is? No. no. How cigarettes? old are you? Do you know? Thirty-five. Uh, right. Like in, in one of my uh, 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 freer few days, previous you know, experience. I wrote a pilot for bringing. A, a, a new old writer. I really did. So, so, weird, so weirdly, a friend of mine who works for the BBC, we said, "Why don't we bring it back? It would be so brilliant to yeah. bring back El Dorado, particularly with basically it was uh, expats living in Spain, right?" And all of the drama revolved around them living in this town in Spain. And actually, it was before its time. Really I think it would have done would do very well documentary now. Documentary on YouTube, um, in, and it's called <laughs> Trouble at the Top. 
Oh, and yes. It's about, um, it used to be a, a that show. That was a whole series. Bosses. Yes, yes. And there's an El Dorado episode. About is there? All, and, and it's in quite bad quality, but it's got all the cast members, and they talk about what a disaster it was at first, <laughs> and how it got good at the end. Yeah, Marcus Dandy. Do you remember like, Marcus Dandy? Marcus, <laughs> Marcus Dandy. Pina Moreno. <laughs> We're not speaking I, a different I language. I literally don't know what's going on. <laughs> Anyway, what have you got? Talking of not knowing what's going on, mm. Angela Rayner all over the front pages yes. this morning. I said this story will not go away. And, you know, it just it, it smacks of hypocrisy, the whole thing. We'll talk about that, obviously. Also, Graham Stewart, the energy minister, has stood down as well. I'm hearing rumours that after the May elections, 2nd of May, Sunak is now thinking to go to the country. He will go and ask for uh, a general election on May the 3rd because he's so worried about the hemorrhaging of voters away from the Conservative Party. Goodness knows what's going on right. there. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the economy. It's grown. Woo! 0.1%. 0 0.1%. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to be talking, actually, to an economist, Edmund Greaves, about that. But Nanke also saying the Bank of England is not fit for purpose and actually their forecasting was absolutely terrible. And Andrew Bailey refusing to apologise for the mess that we're in.